Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast, the project investigation collaboration, the collaboratory podcast between the Veritas Project and Investigator Todd. And who are we? Well, this over here is Wiki Bob. The he knows everything about the paranormal that you could ever think of and has forgotten more than I could ever learn. And the man with the best wardrobe in the business. This is Robert Curtis, founder of the Veritas Project. And he is our gracious host as we are in the Veritas Project studios. Yeah. And I am Investigator Todd, Todd Boyer. And welcome to the podcast, everybody. Yeah, welcome. So today we are going to talk about astral projection. Yeah. And I know we're a little late to the party, but... Um, so the show Stranger Things actually started with the Astral Projection Project. Yeah, in the first season. In the first season. Okay. So we're talking about the Astral Projection and, and the government actually, that was a legit project that they had. Oh yeah, for a long time. For a long time. Um, these documents actually became declassified in the last few years. Right. So you, if you guys want to go down that rabbit hole, and you know how we feel about that, go. <laughs> go down the rabbit hole, yeah. do the research yourself, check everything out. Um, so definitely, definitely, definitely check everything out. So let's, let's start talking about astral projection. So uh, the definition, the basic concept is um, basically you can allow your consciousness to leave your body. Okay? and see things from a different place um you can actually i know that people who do it in dreams they like float up above their body right and they're attached with silver umbilical back to their body and something shocking usually brings them back but they can see everything that's going on in a distant place or or wherever mm -hmm. um you know uh, and there's a lot of ways to get there mm -hmm. um there's Drugs. There's uh, yeah. meditation, right? Or you know, of course, the government they want to use drugs. But <laughs> <laughs> they like to cheat. They like they to cheat a little they bit. Want, they don't want uh, uh, like freelance stuff. They want right. something that's repeatable. Yep. So that's why they use drugs to do it. Yep. They want to make sure that 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 their experiments can be repeated. So, um, what do you want to cover first? You want to actually cover the military stuff, or do you want to yeah, go through? Yeah, we can do that. So. Um, the remote viewing project uh, was commonly known as the Stargate Project, and it was, uh, you know, conducted for the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, and the CIA to investigate potential of remote viewing for intelligence gathering. Uh, here are the detailed points of the project. We have the overview. Uh, so the primary aim was to explore whether remote viewing could be used for military application and intelligence applications. Uh, for gathering any kind of information they could on the enemy. I right. mean, that's the bottom line. And this yeah. is, we're talking middle of the Cold War. Yeah. So, like, anything we could get on the Russians at that time, you know, in yeah. any way we could get it, I mean, was, you know, over the top. Yeah. So, the project ran from the 1970s to, oh, up to 1995. So, I mean, it, it, it went a long time. So, uh, initially it was the CIA and then like I said the DIA became involved and then the army became involved right so and the main research was done at Stanford in uh, Menlo Park California right so oh man it's it's an interesting it's a whole, rabbit hole to go yeah. down and yeah. it, it it's like CIA uh, spying stuff it, it has scientific things too because people who were in that state could like see deeper into projects so right. they'd, they'd remote viewed other countries research and then came back and then uh, wrote like a dissertation on what they had seen but then it was improved on by by the the remote, some, viewers, the, the remote yeah. viewers consciousness so it, it was it was really neat some of the papers it's all declassified now mostly of the older stuff is declassified now and you can you can see all of it it's on you know the cia's archives and and that kind of stuff yep, go digging go digging take okay. your shovel a lot of it's still redacted but you get the idea you know that they're what, what the gist of of the project was it's pretty neat so our key players were ingo swan hmm. 
um, which he was a remote viewer who helped develop uh, the protocols. Mm -hmm. Hal Puthoff and Russell Targ, they were physicists at Stanford, uh, who conducted the research and experiments on re remote viewing. Then you have uh, Major General Albert Stubblebein, mm -hmm. and I know, yeah. name, name stranger than <laughs> fiction, right? Um, now he was a big advocate for it. And then Pat Price, um, he was a notable remote viewer who provided significant intelligence yeah. reports. Um, and they legit brought back like they've shown in these reports that they actually brought back legit information yeah, yeah. Um, after the fact that they were correct that they actually did remote view these projects and brought back accurate information. Yeah, when when so. they first brought this to the 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 defense contractors and DARPA and the the DIA, they they didn't believe them that this was possible. So they had um, secure communications into a skiff. Which is like a it's like a room that the government uses for um, compartmentalized uh, classified documents, and they transferred a message through through the skiff to uh, I believe it was Italy into one of their their secure platforms, and then that guy wrote it. One person wrote it on an envelope, sealed it, and then put it in a filing cabinet. It's yep. inside of the skiff, right? And then they they just gave Pat Price the coordinates mm -hmm. of it. They gave him the grid coordinates, and they said, "Okay, here here's the grid coordinates. This is a room in the basement of a building that is dark, and there is a metal filing cabinet. And in this drawer of the filing cabinet, there is an envelope that has some things written on it. Go find it." So he came back to them with his notepad that had a bunch of scribblings on it. And in his scribblings of his remote viewing was the contents of that envelope. And this was a double blind study. They've done multiple double blind studies to prove that it was actually right. got the, the facts right, right. Right. And just like he said, they would give them uh, they would give them landmarks, they would give them grid coordinates, you yeah. know, stuff like that. Just okay, hey, this building in Russia, blah blah blah, yeah. right? Go see what's there. Yeah. And they would bring back valid information on what they found. And they they would use spies in the field to test them constantly. So they would they would have spies like um, one of the stories I heard was a guy took the board uh, for like Candyland or shoots mm -hmm. and ladders or something like that and put it in a briefcase and then stuck it under under a van or something and then told them to go look for it. And the guy, it was 100%, he's like, it's some kind of toy, I think, or something that's flat and blah, blah, blah. And eventually he, he right. narrowed down to what it was. But they would, they would constantly do that. They would, they, the, so the guys who were in the program didn't know 100% of the time that what they were looking at it was a real government, you know, target, per right. se, or if it was a test that they were, they were being caught, you know. Now, they, they found nuclear subs. Yeah. They found kidnapped people. They found missing aircraft, mm -hmm. so like, I mean, they they took all kinds of, you right. know, information they got. So, well, if you know, if you recall our going missing in the national parks thing when we were talking about that, Pat Price is one of the characters in that. He uh, he helped use his remote viewing techniques to find people that were lost in the national forest. That's all we had six. Oh, we had more than that. <laughs> so so it, it, it's a real thing and and you know how we always say you know you have to look at don't just look at you know the evidence but look like look look at the the, the whole the whole program as, as a whole right. right and it's not just like oh it's some sort of you know paranormal thing that's going on there has to be some kind of science to it otherwise it wouldn't be working right right exactly so how is it that they're tapping into some sort of, you know, hidden network to find these objects and remote view these objects, and, and how are they, like, using their brain like an antenna, you know, to to do these things? It's, right, it's and they they were using LSD to yeah, like small dose LSD to help right get their and brain I, into Iowas that ayahuasca, ayahuasca yeah. yeah, to help them get their brains into that position to be right. able to. And that's kind of what they did, like we said in um, in Stranger Things, is they were using yeah. these children to do remote viewing and stuff right. like that, and they were crossing 
course with Stranger Things, they were crossing into another dimension and found right, something. Right. And, yeah, and that, yeah, that's, that's kind of so. what they talk about in, in the CIA documents too, because these people saw uh, homunculi uh -huh. and, and they have all kinds of writings about stuff like that in, in CIA documents. Right. And you know, like your average person who's just on the internet scrolling through stuff is going to see that stuff and be like, this is nuts. Like these people are seeing the past, the future, you know, cryptids, all, yeah. all kinds of stuff, you know, so it, it kind of muddies the waters a little bit. If you guys bit. really want to go down rabbit holes, go look at some of those declassified documents yeah. because the government had its fingers in everything right. and it you you'd think oh this is this is no way you'd think yeah. this is like world war ii hitler kind of craziness yeah, yeah, yeah. doing every research possible nah our government was doing it too yeah we were like all into everything yeah i mean mm -hmm. like uh what's the one where they they uh, made the ship disappear uh oh, the um uh uh Oh, I want to say it's the Manhattan Project. Yes, it is. I, is it the Manhattan, no, Manhattan Project? Manhattan Project was the nuclear bomb. The nu okay, so anyway, I mean, they were even like the Philadelphia. The experiment. Philadelphia experiment. Okay, so yeah. you know they they were trying to make ships disappear into other planes of existence. Yeah. You know, crazy. I mean, just crazy stuff. Our government was involved in all of this. Yeah. Um. So obviously, the scientific community poo pooed it. Well, yeah, right. Of course. Right. You know, because um, you know. The thing, the thing that I cited was the one thing that the scientists cited to. They were like, "What? What is this about homunculi and and creating human consciousness in the jar? And like, what? Well, what? What are we even supposed to do with this? You right. Know? And whereas the remote viewers are like, "Well, when you look at the totality of it, then it kind of makes sense, right? right? Because you're looking at somebody's describing a thing who is in a drug-induced state, and you you kind of have to use that filter." Right f over their evidence, right? Because if they go off on a tangent talking about spider people taking over the moon, you're like, oh, <laughs> right, all right, right. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But as a scientist, they look at that and they they throw the whole thing out because they're like, none of this is none of this is is verifiable, right? When in reality, it all of it is verifiable, you know, until it isn't. That's like we right. always say, you know, like it, it, it's it's always it's always fringe and right. and, and you know thing until it isn't well then you know in 1995 they declassified the project right right um and then the air the american institute of research came out and said no there's not enough here to prove that this was actually factual right but once again it's a matter of how what color glasses are you looking through exactly you know like how many people believe in the paranormal and how many people don't believe in the paranormal right. you know what i mean so it really depends on what what side of the coin you're on and, and it's right, like if you're open-minded enough. That the, the, the scientists know. who were evaluating the projects would look at it and go, well, they were talking about nonsense right. for like five or six pages. Or it's not even coherent what they were talking about. But then in this one sentence, they absolutely nailed it. Right. You know what I mean? So the scientists are willing to throw out everything, you know, for, for this one, you know, to, to say all of this is, is garbage. It's all junk right. science. And know. due to the ARR, AIR, the mm. whole project was scrapped. Right. So because they said, and you have to remember, when you're talking about science here, you know, uh, like your normal scientist is either it's there or it's not. There's no gray. Yeah. Right? right. There's no gray area, which, you know, you guys know the paranormal has a lot of, a lot of gray area. Um, yeah, it's mostly gray area. <laughs> so apparently, Robin Robin made a uh, oh. a poll for us. Has anyone experienced astral projection? And nobody voted. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I recently started doing the uh, uh, gateway experience. Have you seen that? Uh -uh. Well, back in the eighties, they had um, oh I forget what the name of it is the something institute. Um, but anyway, what it is is it uses different tones in different ears, and it it makes your brain hemispheres come into sync. So right. instead of using one little little golf ball size of your brain at any one time, you can use a whole softball size of your brain. Right. And it puts you into a state where you can actually astral project yourself into, like, in mechanically instead mm. of having to use drugs or having to use. Uh, uh, person who's an expert at it you know you can learn how to do it yourself and I, I recently just started doing this so it's kind of cool so there are various techniques and you know once obviously the ARI got involved and that kind of like said everything kind of fell apart on the government side yeah so we're gonna move on from that and we're actually going to um, 
you know, the whole, just the general knowledge of astral projection. And so there are different ways to get there, right? I mean, yep. so we, we discussed the government using, using drugs, meditation, Mushrooms, sound, yeah. vibration. Yeah. Like there are different ways to get there. And what happens is, is you get into a state in your brain that you just float away. I mean, right. it's, it's, it's hard to describe. So I had an experience and it wasn't really an astral projection experience, but kind of like one of those situations where mm -hmm. my brain just went like where I, I basically tranced myself into something. Okay. So I was a teenager and I, I was like, I'm going to make this door move. And it was a swinging door. Okay. Right. And I'm going to, I'm like, I'm going to make this door move and I'm standing there and I was there. I don't know how long I stood there and I got to the point to where I almost like blacked out kind of mm -hmm. because I was so focused on making the door move and then the door moved about that far and it snapped me out of it. Yeah. Right. So I don't know if I actually made door move or something else made door move or whatever, right. but it was like, I got so in tune with trying to make this door move that I actually kind of went into a trance. Yeah. And the door itself moving brought me out of it. So mm. I'm not saying I'm, you know, right. use the force right, on the right, fucking right. door. Right? But, yeah. <laughs> but I got, it was that experience <laughs> that I got to the point where I kind of went into a trance. Yeah. Like I was so focused on it. And that's kind of how this is. You you get your whole brain just kind of wrapped around it, and it just, right. you know, that's that's kind of like with uh, uh, lucid dreaming. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of the yeah. same thing. And I'm sure lucid dreaming, if you could get into that, it would start helping with the astral projection. Wouldn't yeah. you think? Exactly. You that's kind of like what the hemisync thing does. Is it? It gets you into that relaxed state where you. Uh, they call it uh, level ten. In the, the ten state, so that way you can you can leave your body and then you leave all of your problems and all of the stuff where you're right. at away behind, and then you go into a new, you know, kind of project yourself into a new era, new level of consciousness. Well, yeah, and there was there, you know, I've seen a lot of things where just like, and the littlest things bring you back too. Yeah, you know what I mean, especially if you do it from a meditative state mm -hmm. or you know something like that. It it you if you're Forcing your, I don't want to say forcing, but if you're willing yourself out there rather than using an outside influence, mm -hmm. like, you know, like the sound or the vibrations or, or the pharmaceuticals, right? then it's easier to be returned to your body yeah. because you're not being forced to stay in that state for some kind of reason. So. Yeah. And that, that's, that's what the government was trying to do with the drugs, was to hold right. the people in that state. So when, when the thing, you know, when they moved the door, it didn't jolt them out of it, you know. Right. It, it was, you were there in that moment, you couldn't go back until the drugs wore off enough right. to come back. So you would keep doing the thing. Right. So there's a lot of this also goes on uh, people in surgery. Yeah. There's a lot of people who actually see their own surgery from above. Mm -hmm. They watch their surgery. It's like, yeah, it's wild. Crazy. You know, go back, you know, rabbit hole that one. Go take a look at that one because yeah. that happens more than you would think. It happens to a lot of people that they actually astral project while they're under and watch mm -hmm. their own surgery. I mean, and people, oh, it was just a dream. You know, your mind made it all up. But why does it happen to so many people? Yeah. You know? And they can describe everything that yep. happened you know and you got like a guy who's having a knee surgery and he's a tow truck driver right and then he can tell you about you know they use the anderson forceps or they yeah they, they were asking for uh you know wiggins clamp or something like yeah. that i mean some he would have no idea what they were talking about you know or they had a conversation about lobster and blah blah, yeah. blah you know and he knew all of that and they're like yeah it's in your subconscious because you were actually there but at the same time he was out you know yeah, but so, yeah, he saw it all in his brain, right. you know, so it's kind of wild. So, um, you know, people use this for like, they want to encounter entities or they yeah. want to visit dif distant places um, and they want to perceive maybe time differently, right. you know, because there have been situations with the ayahuasca mm -hmm. that there was one guy, he was out for three minutes on the ayahuasca and he lived like three years 
in another life. He got married, had kids, like the whole right. thing, and then boop, he was back to this life. You know, yeah. so this stuff is like <laughs> out right. there. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, the, you also have the sensation of like you're flying or floating. Right. You know, which is why a lot of people do it because you know, and I don't think it's fair that the birds get to fly and we don't, but whatever <laughs> is what it is. Um, so the out of body experiences, there's spontaneous. Um, near death and trauma is mm -hmm. like one of the big ones uh, you know and then like I said like I mentioned before that's funny because the I mentioned this cord. before and we're, we're here to it now the silver cord concept where you have right. a silver umbilical uh, from your spirit or your soul or whatever it is that's right. going away back to your actual physical form um, you know and then there's tons of documented personal accounts mm -hmm. you know and then it's it's same as kind of like I said lucid dreaming it's yeah. almost almost the same and I wonder if you could kind of take yourself from that state into you know what I mean like be on the edge of sleep and lucid dreaming and then move to that that other state of astral projection I so bet. you probably could. probably could so um, so there's remote viewing protocols and then you know it, uh, here we're talking about Stargate project we got to yeah. and because we pulled up information from two different areas because we really want to touch base hardcore on, on, the, on, the, the, Stargate on the Stargate project. because it's such a wild thing that our government you know did that um, you know there's there's success stories and there's a lot of, of remote viewers that have been proven to be legit remote viewers have yeah. come back and said you know this that they've been tested so um, there's astral project projection in different religions um, and the the whole chakra energy, right. the karma, and the past lives, that all plays into it. Um, yeah. And you can explore your past lives through astral projection. Exactly. Because it allows you to see things in the past. Because when you're astral projecting, time is perceived differently because time is a construct that we have created as human beings. I know this sounds nuts. Um, <laughs> that we have created as human beings to organize everything you know what I mean yeah so you know it's the way we perceive things and 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 just these bodies perceive it that way because um, right. there's a lot of belief out there that that our bodies perceive time here but out there there's no such thing as time mm -hmm. you know and they say time is constant but time isn't really constant no it's relative to yeah. to the observed observing point of it yeah right because all our time is based on cycles of the Sun right and then the rotation of the earth so people or beings or whatever from a different universe would have no concept of that time right and they've also proven that um, they I've seen them do an experiment where they dropped people into a net mm -hmm. from like a hundred feet and they have a, 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 a panel on their arm a digital panel and it's flashing numbers so quickly that you can't read them mm -hmm. And they drop those people. And you know how people say when stuff happens, it's like time slowed down? Oh, yeah. They were able to pick out like two, three, four numbers out of that sequence hmm. as they were dropped. Even though they, the drop only took like a second and a half or whatever, or two seconds or whatever it was, they were able to pick out individual numbers out of that sequence that were so fast that you couldn't read them with a human eye. Huh. Because the, the time slowed legitimately slowed down for them. So that's the thing. Was it an adrenaline rush that allowed them to pick that right. up, or was it actually Focus. a bend of time for yeah. them? So another rabbit hole. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know yeah. how we like the rabbit holes. Right. So, yeah. See, Robin agrees. Time, time isn't a thing except for here. Uh, so yeah, like the movie Contact. So uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Contact. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the main character gets dropped into uh, a net through these spinning spheres mm -hmm. and she goes and has this whole thing go on and when she when she returns they're like oh we're sorry you know it didn't work or whatever and she's like what do you mean it didn't work I was there like 12 hours and then her camera had 12 hours of static and then she came where it came back or something like that yeah you know, so why did I just get the goosebumps? That was kind of yeah. weird. <laughs> um, so potential risks. Um, you know, if 
fear of anxiety. Uh, yeah. People may start to hallucinate. Um, people get worried about being stuck in the astral plane. Yeah. So, you know, and then, of course, like, you have the, basically what happened in, uh, I can't even think of it. Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Yeah. You, you run into negative entities and energies. Right. So that's kind of things, you know, like Bob said, you know, homunculi and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So... Uh, there are good things to it, you know, like self-discovery and problem-solving and healing energy and yeah. gaining insight and, right. you know, exploration. Different perspective. Yeah, different perspective and seeing things, so. A lot of wildness going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know from the the, uh, the Gateway experience, they, they people on the, like, forums and, and even on TikTok, they talk about it when they, when they get to a certain stage of, of doing the the gateway mm -hmm. that there is like an entity that they they come into is kind of like almost like an alien that they meet you know wow. and it'll it'll like put itself into your scene you know so like you're on a beach looking at the sunset or whatever and then like you'll notice it on the on the periphery of your view and then right. once it sees you notice it then it'll come like and try to like interact with you that's but wild. if you ignore it, then it'll just stay on the periphery. Right, because you know? it maybe it, maybe it's trying to see if you're actually dreaming or if you're right. actually conscious in that space. But it comes into that area, and they don't know that's why you wild. came into that area. Yeah. So they they'll just kind of spy on you from a distance. But that's kind of wild. I've heard multiple people talk about that, and it was like an inside thing for a while too. When I first got it, got into the the reading of it, you know, where they were like, "Have you seen the Have you seen the Watchers yet?" And I'm like, "No, I haven't. I haven't seen anything yet. I haven't gotten that far." And uh, yeah, it's crazy. Party in the library, yep, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> party in the library, especially with our new book, definitely yeah. a party. <laughs> <laughs> party for somebody, anyway, or a couple right. people. So, um, got anything to think of that you want to add? I mean, um, there's a lot to talk about. It, it, I, we could sit here all night talking about astral projection and even like. The, the government believes that that's how the the UFOs that don't have anything in it, like they're... they're, they're how you know, they're controlled. That's how they're controlled, just by somewhere in the universe, there's an alien who's astral projecting into that ship. And that's why when we see it doesn't have windows, doesn't have doors... It's and just, it can change direction right. and high velocity. Yeah, because there's, there's no, nothing in it. There's no pilot in it. It's just a, a device of some sort. Yeah. Man. Crazy, crazy stuff crazy on the fringe. Crazy stuff. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to go. Um, so I guess I guess we'll go ahead and and, and wrap it up. Um, yeah. You know, you guys know where to find us. Um, you know, Bob's is RS Curtis on mm -hmm. on everything, and uh, the Real Veritas Project is the email at Gmail. Um, you know, and the Veritas Project like yeah. here on TikTok and a few other places. If you um, want to know anything. Yeah. Anything more to so ask it, a question? We an we will one hundred percent love to hear from you guys. And of course, I'm Investigator Todd, and uh, my email is investigator.todd.paranormal at gmail. You know, if you guys even have an idea for the podcast, you know, shoot us a message, leave a comment in yeah. the in the um, in the podcast comments there. If you want you us know, to go further down the rabbit hole we'll, or something, yeah, like something, comments. anything, you know, anything you guys like us to do. Uh, you know, we'll do some research on it. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. You know, we're always up for more investigations. I'm going to call that lady uh, at New Athens on Monday again. Nice. So we may have an investigation coming up. I'm, I'm working. Yeah. I'm working. I got the wrenches out. I'm trying to do a thing, get us uh, investigating. We're going to try a different investigation technique this time because we're going to have we're going to have the live, and then right. we're going to record the the investigation in totality for the YouTube so right. we can actually instead of like we had been doing so we would do the investigation then we would come back here it. and then show you the evidence it. yeah right so th this time we're going to do it on both we'll have the TikTok and the YouTube so that we'll have long form video that we can actually show you and you can go and watch mm -hmm. the whole the whole thing Yep, so that'll be great if we can get that place that, yeah. you know I'm working on it I I, I emailed her um Wednesday or Thursday, I'll call her back. We'll see what happens. Um, so, like I said, once again, you know, if you want to contact Bob, you know where to find him. You know where yep. to find me. 
you know if you guys have an idea for a podcast you know absolutely definitely leave leave us information you know um we'll definitely look it up and and <laughs> dig deep into whatever it is you guys want us to look into yeah um whatever it is whatever it is so well, i think that's uh we cover everything i think we're good have you been uh, updating the spotify somebody asked me if we're on spotify no, no we're on spotify I haven't. we haven't updated it in a while so there's probably I don't know, like 15 maybe? Yeah, because we're like 15, 30 we're episodes in, yeah, or almost like 40. 30 something, yeah. Yeah, almost 40. So thank you guys <laughs> for joining us. Uh, you know, we appreciate you guys. Sorry we had to go live later, but, you know, someone decided to unalive, so Bob had to go to work. Yeah, that's so, no fun. Yeah, so especially <laughs> for the person Bob had to go to work for. Right. So, you know, thank you guys for joining us, and remember... Stay curious. And find the truth, and we will catch you guys next time on the podcast. Bye, everybody. See ya.